Welcome to Tron's Tech Trek. Today we are going to see if the RTX 20 series graphics cards are a viable option in 2024. We'll have a mix of 1080p and 1440p as well as Firmark 2.0 to benchmark the cards. I tested both cards using the same computer with these specifications, an Intel i5-12600K, 32GB DDR4 at 36MHz, 2TB silicon powered Gen 3 NVMe, Asus TUF B760 Plus, and 700W Thermaltake PSU. Now let's start with gaming benchmarks. Helldivers 2 is a very resource intense game, especially on high settings. I had both cards set to native resolutions, high settings, without motion blur, and camera shake. We hit the sweet spot of 60fps average in 1080p on both cards, but once it's cranked up to 1440p we started to struggle, dipping into 40 and 50 respectively. Even though these are both 8GB VRAM cards, we see a larger bump in FPS over 1440p than in 1080p, but overall a solid performer and the FPS could go higher with some tweaking. Ghost of Tsushima's Director's Cut released in June of 2024 and needs some serious hardware to run properly. The Steam website recommends a RTX 2060, but I would recommend something better than that to get a seamless experience playing this game. Again, we hit the 60fps sweet spot in 1080p and 1440p on high settings. It wasn't the maximum graphical setting, but in my testing there were very little difference between high and very high. Strangely, there was only a small bump in FPS in this title. While other games saw a big jump in FPS numbers from the 2070 to the 2080, this might have to do with the cards being both limited at 8GB of VRAM. Marvel Spider-Man has some great performance on high settings. The RTX 2080 stayed in the triple digit FPS on both 1080p and 1440p, while the RTX 2070 dipped to 78 FPS in 1440p. Still some very smooth gameplay. Diablo 4 had some trouble switching from my screen's native resolution of 1440p to 1080p. Whenever I tried to switch, it would limit my FPS to 60. Unsure why this happened, so I only have the 1440p benchmark. A good estimate to see what the 1080p scores would look like is to increase the 1440p scores by 20%, so the RTX 2070 would have an average FPS close to 105 in 1080 and 124 FPS in the RTX 2080. Even in 1440p on ultra settings, we are seeing some great numbers. Elden Ring Shadow of the Erd Tree has some areas that are more graphically intense than the base game, specifically in the intro area that features a very wide and open grassland. This was tested at highest settings and saw 60 FPS scores all around with the RTX 2070 hitting 59 at 1440p, but still a very smooth experience. The game is locked at 60 FPS, so that's as high as we could go. Doom Eternal had some massive numbers. On max settings, we saw a whopping 167 FPS in 1080p for the RTX 2080. Even the lowest score at 1440p is 128 FPS for the RTX 2070 is a fantastic result. CSGO 2 also saw some huge FPS results. On high settings, we got 280 FPS average for the 2080 and 211 FPS average for the 2070. Even on 1440p, we're well above 120 FPS on each card, which is the standard Hertz rating for high FPS competitive titles. Lastly, we have Resident Evil 4 Remake with some great performance. On the prioritized graphics setting, we saw 1440p results stable at 60fps or above on both cards, and triple digit FPS numbers for the RTX 2080. Let's go over my conclusion of these cards. The RTX 2070 had an average FPS of 106 at 1080p and 84 at 1440p. The 2080 had an average of 123 at 1080p and 101 at 1440p. In 1080p, the RTX 2080 averaged 16% higher than the RTX 2070, and 20% increase in 1440p gaming. Both cards are perfectly suited for 1440p high settings, but some games could use some tweaking like Helldivers 2 to get that smooth 60fps experience. I left out ray tracing test for these cards since enable it takes a serious hit to the FPS numbers. With some titles are barely scraping by at the 60fps on average, enabling ray tracing will put them well into the 20 to 30fps average which is not an enjoyable experience. The Furmark 2.0 scores yielded some interesting results. We see the RTX 2080 score 32% higher than the 2070 in 1080p and 24% higher in 1440p. Not exactly the same results we see in games. We also see the average FPS scores is very similar to the average FPS score across all the games we tested. If you're wondering what kind of average FPS you would get across all games, Furmark 2.0 might be a good option to see how powerful your card is for modern games. Finally, would I recommend these graphics cards? While these cards are only available through the used market, I would still 100% recommend them for a budget 1080p or 1440p build. They hover in the $160 to $210 price range, which is the same price as the new RTX 3050, which wouldn't get nearly the same performance from these cards. The new AMD option would be a RX 6600 XT, which averages the same or slightly better in FPS numbers and retails at $200. Ray tracing may be out of the question, but that's usually not a priority for people who are making a budget build. 
The only caution I have against these cars is that they are six years old now, and there's a possibility ones being sold were used for crypto mining, and more than likely could be due for repasting since it's not that common for people to repaste their GPUs. Thanks for tuning in. This was my first video and I hope to create more content like PC builds and reviewing other PC components. Give the video a like and a subscribe. I'll see you all next time.